Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, allow me to welcome you. It's always nice to see new and smiling faces. And remember, if you like the content, please consider subscribing as this will go a long way in supporting this channel by helping it grow in this mad and complex world of the algorithms. In today's video, I want to talk about a few things that I wish I knew before starting my career as a designer. So let's get into it. In this video, I want to focus on the skill side. Maybe in the future, I will do a few more of these to help you out with advice on interviews and or starting your own agency and so on. I am hoping that this will help you to kind of understand what you need to do in order to avoid unnecessary mistakes and also to guide you into making the right career choice. So I have about 10 years of experience now. I started as a graphic designer during university, moved on to owning my own company, back to a full-time senior product designer job, then contractor as a UX UI designer, and now agency owner. I know, it's a lot. Trust me, I've learned quite a bit, and I'm here to make sure you learn faster than I did. Now to get into the actual subject, after my long background explanation, here are my 5 things that I wish I knew before starting this long journey. Firstly, you need to make peace with the idea that technology is a fast learning, an always learning type of industry, so don't get too attached to Photoshop, Figma, Sketch, and so on. There will always be something new and efficient coming out. And you will learn it quickly, so don't worry about it. You will have to change your mentality. And when something new comes out, try it and then judge it. Don't say things like, no, I like the program and it does the job. Personally, back in the days, I got used to Photoshop, even though I didn't really like it. And when Sketch came out, I just ignored it for a couple of months before trying it out. So I wasted so much time of my life doing things the hard way. Believe me, you spend way less time on learning a new skill than if you keep the old one and try to use it on new technology and on new products. Even now, for example, I decided to go from Premiere Pro to Final Cut for my YouTube videos. Again, this is a new industry for me, but I'm applying what I've learned and taking people's advices in order to become better at this. Secondly, it's not enough to have a top-notch portfolio. You need to know how to present it. I wish I knew this at my first interview when I simply thought that my portfolio would just do the talking. Like here it is, it's wonderful, please hire me. No, that's not how you do it. You need to talk about each project. What was the spec and what difficulties you found while creating these designs and these user experiences and how you tackle those problems and difficulties. Again, don't start mumbling on and on about your cat and your grandmother. Try to be concise and clear and cover at least your top three projects that you are most proud of. This also shows your employer that you are able to talk about your designs with shareholders, developers, and so on. And number three, the golden rule. As a UX UI designer, you are not paid to draw pretty nice things. You are paid to solve problems and to make the company money. If you need to change a pretty illustration with a button because it means that the customers will buy more, you will do it. The customers cannot spend all day looking at the wonderful designs that you created. He or she needs to find things quickly, like products and buy now buttons. Again, you will get to this through years and years of practice, but the sooner you realize your true purpose as a designer, the better, and the faster you will understand why UX UI designers are paid so much. Number four is continuing on the golden rule. Another thing you should know from the beginning is to never start designing or sketching before you truly understand your target audience. And for this, you have different tools online that show you a roadmap that you have to take, like checking out your competition, doing some user research, asking the right questions, a bit of user testing, building your persona, which is the person who is most likely to buy your product, and so on. And trust me, I wish I knew this, because a lot of the times I was getting ahead of myself and trying to impress my boss, but I would basically have to redo most of my work after the first meeting with the project manager or the shareholders. And lastly, don't be afraid to make mistakes or to try something new. 
This is exactly the industry where you want to do it and where you will pop out from the crowd if you do so. If you come with initiative and new ideas, people will eventually recommend you for other projects, even to other companies, and you will be able to grow as an individual and as a designer. I kept most of my contacts just because of this, not being afraid to get my hands dirty and do the work and try new things. For this, you can always subscribe to different YouTube channels like, I don't know, this one, or design communities like Dribbble and so on. This way you'll stay on top of design trends and test them out firsthand. This is all for today, guys. Hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.